Hi, I'm Blake. And I'm Taylor. We are the Powell Brothers. This is another great episode of ETX Rocks, featuring our wonderful sister, Mandy Powell. From the great state of Texas, this is the latest episode of the ETX Rock Show. Nestled in the piney woods of East Texas, the ETX Rock Show delivers the stories and songs of talented artists of all genres, all styles, from the unheralded and unheard to the legends and beyond. We bring a passion for music and a drive to go behind the curtain with our guests. We focus on all artists, from LA to New York, Nashville down to Texas, and everywhere in between. ETX is our location, not a limitation. Now as always, it's viewers and listeners like you out there that are our biggest support for the show. If you want to contribute to the show, please do so by donating to www.paypal.me forward slash ETX rocks and thank you for tuning in. Wherever you're tuned in, please hit the like, follow, and or subscribe buttons. And now for another great episode of ETX Rock. Hey guys, Boston Chris here and this is another great episode of the ETX Rock Show number 233. Now one of the hardest things to do in the music business is to write commercially appealing songs while also keeping an honest approach to your craft as a songwriter. Mandy Powell has managed to find a way to do just that. With many different influences, this San Felipe, Texas native is the pure definition of what a songwriter should be. Someone who takes from the environment around her and transforms it into art. This week on the ETX Rock Show, we are truly excited to introduce everyone out there to Mandy Powell. Hey guys, Boston Chris here, and this is another great episode of the ETX Rock Show. <laughs> Number 233, and for the first time ever on the show, we have Mandy Powell Hi guys. Uh, visiting with us. Now, Mandy is from the Houston area. Yes. San Felipe. San Felipe, Texas. And man, thank you guys so much for coming out yeah, and visiting with us. Yeah, thank you for having us. I know it's a long drive. Yeah, it was fun though. And we've been trying to get you on the show for a while. And I know. Some it, stuff was happening. Yeah, and, there was flu bug and yeah. then just conflicting And we tried to do it on Valentine's Day, but that's a good day for an artist to get gigging. And it was a great day for that gig because I'm yeah. really funny. <laughs> But it, it worked out. We finally got her here. Yeah. And as weird. you guys can see, she has her guitar, so she's going to play us a couple of songs. Yes. Tell us about the first one and, and the story behind it. So the first song that I uh, will be playing is um, the title track off my latest album, and it's called Fly Away. And I, um, I wrote the song <laughs> because I was going, you know, kind of talking to a, a guy, and he just up and decided to Was his fly name Peter? Away. It could be Peter, so that, you know it just sounded like a good name for somebody that would just fly away. So the that's how I wrote the song. Yeah, is what it is. And then I got a little ex, um, a little extra inspiration because I have three nephews and they're starting to grow up so fast, you right. know. So they're starting to turn into like these teenage humans and not little <laughs> kids anymore. But I never want them to like lose that that childhood, you know, that's all curiousness. You know, that's, it, that's all of us. Yeah. So. They gave Makes me a little look inspiration at our own mortality, to finish it. Right? Yeah, it really yeah. does. It really does. So, so they have a lot to do with that song too. So it's very special. That's why I put it on the title track. Awesome. So guys, check this out. It's live and unplugged with Mandy Powell. The song's called "Fly Away." One, two, three.
so we are back. Once again, that was Fly Away. It's the title track off of her latest uh, album, which is ridiculous. I call it um, bipolar music. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, because the, <laughs> you listen to this album, and, and, and it's all over the place. It is. Musically. It's all over the place. Uh, I mean, from blues to, like, organic, honest, like, ballad-type songs. And um, So, yeah, I was truly excited when, when you agreed to come on the show because I love to pick the brains of songwriters yeah and especially with someone like you who's so far all over the place with genres and styles and um, chord progressions and all of that yeah um yeah. so I, I need to know how this all started for you well the singing uh, i've been singing since i was talking my mom was a singer right. and whenever she would have gigs and she didn't have a sitter so i got to go along and so you know, from tough a young job. age, yeah, yeah. Ter tough job. Yeah. She was also a teacher too during the day, so bless her heart. Um, but she raised a, a little musician, and um, I played in band and stuff in high school, and then what'd you play? Clarinet. Oh, <laughs> I played the clarinet, and I, I still want to pick it up because it's very it's it, it'll transfer over to saxophone because they're yeah. reading instruments. Has it made it to an album yet? Not yet. Oh, no. come no. on! I need to brush up on my clarinet chops. <laughs> my embouchure needs to be. <laughs> you know, I was not well, expecting to hear that word. Yeah, today. that's the greatest word I, I, I've ever heard in my life. Embouchure. It's it's so fancy. I'm not even try it, y'all. It's embouchure. Embouchure. <laughs> it sounds like a really expensive perfume or something. <laughs> <laughs> embouchure. Brought to you by Mariah Carey. <laughs> try the brand new embouchure. Embouchure. <laughs> but it'll, yeah, it'll, so. it'll help you mess up your lip syncing. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure the new gum. <laughs> that we're gonna choke By on Wrigley. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh Lord. We're already sidetracked. I can see where I this know. is gonna go. So I mean it doesn't it doesn't surprise me at all that you've been singing since you were very little because I mean just hearing you today live, you have such control over your vocal cords. Thank it's, you. it's truly an instrument for you. Yeah. Um, for a lot of people you know, who sing for a living, it's not so much an instrument. For you, it definitely is. I mean, you can tell just by watching you go through your progress, your process of singing, and all the different changes in your voice. How long did it take for you to really perfect that? <sighs> I'm still trying to perfect that. <laughs> I don't that's think why I, ever, I asked that. I don't ever stop learning. It really, seems to you me know? that you're probably pretty hard on yourself. Yeah, I, yeah. I am, I'm my own worst critic. I definitely yeah. am. But um, you know, I'm, it took a while for me to actually figure out what to do with my voice and what, what direction I kind of wanted to take my voice, my voice. Cause I grew up on old country. I can, you know, I love three chords and the truth. That's right. what I grew up on. And then as I, you know, got older, I started listening to more of like the Eagles and the classic rock. And so, you know, I just, I, I go everywhere with my music. I don't, I don't want to paint myself into a corner. Right. I, I'd rather not. I'd rather just, you know, we draw inspiration from every type of, walk of life so why not do it musically and isn't texas great that it allows it, artists it, to it, do it that it is it is we are so blessed yeah in our state we really are i mean it's so cool you know just doing this show having so many different independent artists on the show that have that freedom to go wherever they want with their music creatively yeah yeah and it's so awesome to see someone like you and i'm listening to your music both albums yeah and thank you it's it's there like through all, all of it i can see you just like you know what let's do this instead mm -hmm. you know like i can feel your process just by listening to your music yeah which is different for me you know like yeah. i mean being from the north that's not something that i ever really experienced until I came to Texas. Um, so, like, when I'm hearing you sing, especially with all of those changes in your voice, like, I'm picturing you standing there with a phone just, like, trying different things with your voice and recording it's, it in your what? phone. You know what? Sometimes I do, yeah. That sometimes that's homework, and it's, yeah. you know, it's Just trying it's to learning. figure out yeah. rhymes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, trying to, f it, it's it's a part of it. And, you know, that, that's what I always, like, that's my biggest thing is I'll never stop learning, and that's... If there's any advice I could give anybody, it'd be to never stop learning. Right. Don't right. ever try to just think that you're okay at one spot. That's a you're good always, attitude to have. Because there's always going to be somebody younger and better. That's right. No matter Someone's what. Someone's going to take your spot. Exactly. you got to keep hustling. Yeah, keep your hustle up and just be creative, you know? I mean, I don't say it all the time. Don't, don't, be afraid. don't be afraid named, of, uh, of something new or something different. Jared Thomas. Have you heard of Jared Thomas? I have heard of Jared He Thomas. says all the time, you ha I have to hustle to be heard. Yep, and it's true. Yep. It is. And so, it's like, so I've true. taken that on. I've stolen that mantra from Jared. And yeah. Jared's going to be on the show here in a couple months. But, yeah, I saw that as a hashtag on one of his posts. And I was like, man, is that, that's everybody's goal, like, mm -hmm. to be heard. 
It, it is. It you is. Know? It is in any walk of life. You know, right. it really, it truly is. Yeah, not just in music either. I mean, any. Yeah, it's it's every walk of life. All right, so you know, we're talking about your voice and all that, and I also said in the open how much of, how much respect I have for you as a songwriter, just based off of your lyrics and your melodies and all of that. But you know. I mean, there there are multiple phases you have to go through to become a musician. You know, you have to find your voice. You have to find your instrument. Mm -hmm. For you, that's two. You know, your yeah. voice and your guitar. Um, and then you have to find your words, which is a completely different ball game. Yeah. So tell me about the the different phases of you growing into becoming a musician and, and what it was like for you. Oh man, growing pains. <laughs> I'll tell yeah. you what, growing pains. Um, you know, it, it's. It, it's it, it's been a, it's also it's been a fun ride. It has up been you know up to this day even it's just been great. But I think the the good since the guitar was so much newer than my voice that was yeah. what I was really focusing and trying to hone in on right. for a long time. And um, I actually went back and relearned piano again and got myself comfortable enough on piano. So I learned how to transpose better and. You know, and just did a little more studying, honestly. Wow. Study, I mean, and that's what it is, just studying my the instrument. And um, from there, you know, I think in my mind, lyrics, they pour out sometimes. And they do. And honestly, I've had a quite a, I've been fortunate enough to have songs that would just kind of fall out. Right. And just, you know. Almost like you're a conduit. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. It was like, well, I'm just the messenger here. You right. know, obviously the song needed to be written. Does that freak you out when that's it, happening? It, sometimes it does. Yeah. It really does. It's like, whoa. But um, it's, it's cool. Like, Did yeah. I, I wrote that? I wrote that. Yeah. And especially like, you know, when you do it late at night after a few drinks and the next morning you wake up and you're like, oh God. Liquid inspiration. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Liquid inspiration. There you go. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, and, and that's really it. I, I started to study more and just, and I surrounded myself with many different musicians on every level, right? every level. Cause you still learn, you learn from the beginners and the beginners learn from you and you know, um, all of the, Sounds the like guys that have been, around, just I, 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 I am, I, I have just, I love to absorb everything, yeah. you know, and just take it all in. It's, it's great to, oh, we have a lot in common. Yeah. It's refreshing to hear new music and yeah. somebody else's point of view on life. And you know? when you find or discover that new music, you just jump in and yeah. you have to know everything. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah that's exactly. Yeah. I, I, whenever I was learning guitar, cause I didn't pick this up, um, until about eight years ago. Okay. So I was just addicted to it. I didn't realize it, and it yeah. was, you know, but it was. It was. Bet you it wrote a lot drama. of songs in those days. I, I did. Yeah. I did a lot of my early stuff. Um, a few of them I released on Fly Away. A lot of them I released on the first album, Canvas. Yeah. And then there's a few that I haven't released yet, just because they. Cool. I need to kind of go back over them, you know, mm. and figure some lines out here and there. But I definitely wanted to talk about Canvas as well because. Um, you know, your two albums are so different, just yeah. organically different. Yeah. Um, what What was, I mean, how? How did you do that? Like, because, I mean, as a fan, if I'm listening to those two albums back to back, I would never think it was the same girl on both albums. Yeah. Well, there are two different producers um, and definitely two different budgets. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, but the style was, was yeah, different, Yeah, the too. style was different. I really found my voice. There was um, a huge transition period there, and... I mean, it was one of those where I could actually feel myself growing while I was on stage. And I was, you know, that's when I was experimenting wow. with my voice more. And it just happened, like, you know, within those couple of years. And I don't wow. know. I mean, I, I think I can honestly even name the night that it just kind of clicked. clicked. And I was with uh, my girl, Heather Raylene, at the Cypress Saloon. And um, she was, it was her show, and I just came to support. And she called me up, so we were you know doing some songs together and something just stuck i don't know and it's been that way since and what a story yeah yeah i was i was very very raw on the first album and you know looking back now i'm like man i i learned so much and i made so many mistakes at the same time yeah but time. i think but it's neat that you can i mean you can go back in time and, and just cherry pick that moment yeah. in time where you just got it i just got it yeah wow yeah Unbelievable stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's strange just how the mind works. And was that across the board too? Like you just got Pretty it much, everywhere, yeah. like writing, performing. Yeah, well, I mean, 
the writing, I was always writing poetry whenever I was a teenager yeah. before I actually picked up guitar and I was still playing my clarinet. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, not dogging anybody that plays clarinet because it's a great instrument. Um, but yeah. I'm for sure. I'm for sure. <laughs> Damn it. I'm for sure. The new fragrance. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to patent that and start selling it at shows. I'm that's going to go into the merch right I'm going to right change there. the name of the show to that. Oh, I'm sure. There yeah, you go. There you go. <laughs> We're going to brand it right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you you do have new music in the works, which is it really, is. really exciting. It is in the Are works. Are we talking 2018? Um, I would love to be able to promise 2018, but it's probably going to be early 2019. Okay. Hopefully. We'll see. I, I, it could be sooner. I mean, we'll see what happens. So what's it like for Mandy Powell just walking into a studio? Because I know as a songwriter, you don't necessarily like to relinquish control of your babies, your songs. Right. So, you know, sometimes you get into the studio and you can clash. But at the on, on the other hand, you know, those producers and engineers know what they're doing most of the time. And they can yeah. usually pull something out of it that maybe you wouldn't even see as the songwriter. Yeah. So how much control are you willing to give up when you walk into a studio? <laughs> um, I'm fortunate enough to not have to really worry about that at my studio. Yeah. Where the Stormy's studio amazing. Stormy, yeah. yeah. Stormy Cooper, you know, Stormy Cooper Media in Houston that that, that, yeah. that can't talk. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so Stormy and Lyndon over there, they're, they're just, they're wonderful. And I could sit down and... Um, I'll sit down with them and pick their brain, and then they'll pick mine right back, and I'll let them know all my ideas. Yeah. And they just, they got it. Again. They, they just got it, you Again, know? I and think this is a Texas thing. It really you know? is. It really is. There is, that, there's a lot of magic that happens in that studio. Right. There's a lot of magic. And there's the, the cool thing is, I hear this, I mean, all over the state, when it comes to the studios here in Texas, whether it's Houston or, or you know, um, um, Fort Worth Sound, Fort Worth Bart Sound. Rose yeah, and, Bart Rose, um, yeah, Rosewood and Tyler, Chad mm -hmm. Malden over with um, Malden Productions. I mean, everybody is top of the notch yeah, uh, and great at just pulling out that freedom from an artist here in Texas. Yeah. It's so cool to see because in that eternal struggle between Texas and Nashville, yeah. I mean, we're pulling the rope a little harder now. You know, and they're really starting to listen. I know. And it, it's such it's Isn't cool. It neat? It's cool to be yeah. witnessing this, you know, and, and kind of getting to be a part of it. Right. It's really cool. So, you know, the very first time I ever heard of Mandy Powell, I went to her Facebook page and it said country artist from Houston. And so then I started listening to the music and I was like, Wow, that just does not encapsulate who you are at all. Yeah. Because <laughs> you are not a country artist, in no, my opinion. No, I mean, and that's, you know, I feel, it sucks because I'm a third generation Texan. Like, yeah. I'm born and raised in, you know, Texas. So, <laughs> I kind of miss out on some of the stuff that I would love to do because I've been involved with horses my whole life. Right. My you know, my, my dad, um, he was a cutting horse trainer for Bum Phillips for years. Wow. So, he's, he won reserve champion at the rodeo. And I finally get to play the wine garden this year. Oh, cool! At the rodeo, but yeah, there's, and sometimes I feel bad about it, but I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop being me. Yeah, you know? I, I, it's what I am. And what I mean by that, I mean you have country songs. I do absolutely I do. have absolutely. country songs, but um, I don't think you're a country artist at all. I think you can be a country artist, yep. just like you can be a rock artist and yep. Americana and blues and. Man, there's so much that you do that, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm so excited to let our listeners know about you because, I mean, you you are exactly what we love on this show as somebody who's just doing their own thing, is not feeling pressure about being in a box or being pigeonholed or anything mm -hmm. like that. And, I mean, honestly, if I ask you, do you feel that pressure? you probably look at me and say, absolutely not. No, none. Yeah. You know, honestly, it, it's just, it, it took a long time to get there really mm -hmm. because you always want yeah were there always, identity you, problems with you as an artist so as, you know early on there were yeah. and that was just that came with it really came with age and with being in it and making mistakes and you know you really understand like you know humility is a beautiful thing sometimes yeah it really is and you have to carry that you know if you can't be humble and laugh at yourself at the end of the day then you're going to miss out on a lot, right. you know? You have to be happy. <laughs> that moment when you got it, was that part that of that That was part process? of it, yeah. yeah. It really was. It was just, it felt, 
I, f- I didn't feel the need to have to please everybody because I'm not everybody's cup of tea. And yep. you know what? Some people don't even drink tea. That's right. Whatever. I don't drink tea. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, after I after I understood that and I got that mindset, it, it really just helped me open up a lot more and be a lot, you know, more... I don't know, I guess open and writing and trying out new progressions and Yeah. You know. Just always trying to evolve within your art. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. All right, so we're sitting here talking with Mandy Powell from Houston and this is episode two hundred and thirty three. Um uh again, just a phenomenal songwriter. And as you guys might know out there, we have a new show called Songbirds and Troubadours and I've had a few people ask me if we were gonna have Mandy on that show. Yay. So we oh, we'll, ask we're definitely about gonna get her on the schedule before she leaves today. Um so we're excited about that as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Um of course just last night we had Rob Redwine and Dan Johnson on. Yep, I I saw Rob's Instagram. So and stupid. I know. I couldn't even to be a fly on that wall. Oh man. You know, and I'm not gonna cut anything that was said. <laughs> yeah. So it's almost two hours of just banter and a great original music and two geniuses just talking shop uh-huh, for a yeah. couple hours. And I'm not cutting any of it. So it's gonna be great. <laughs> sorry guys. Yeah. <laughs> not just sorry. Deal with it. The songwriters sorry, out sorry. there will be all over that content. Oh yeah. I promise. Yeah. Um anyway, so you know, as as a, a songwriter and I mean the word accomplished is, is such a, um, you know, open-ended word. To me, I think you're an accomplished songwriter just because you made me feel something. And that's the whole point of being a songwriter. Yeah. If you can make someone feel something, I think you've accomplished what you wanted to do. Right. Um, a lot of people out there would think that maybe an accomplished songwriter is somebody that has a Grammy or a number one or something like that. I don't necessarily agree with that. Right. Because I think there are people out there with Grammy Awards that didn't accomplish getting somebody to feel Emotion, mm-hmm. but I, I consider you an accomplished songwriter. So I just I wanted you. to, That's um, a huge compliment. you know, uh, preface that yeah. before my question. As an accomplished songwriter, do you, when you see another songwriter or hear another songwriter and they hit you in your feels, does that inspire you to, to be better? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, it does. Um, speaking, you're wearing a great songwriter's shirt right there, Miss Kayla Ray. Agree. I yeah. just love her to death. And she is definitely one of those. Uh, anytime I'm around her, I get to hear her play yeah. and listen to her, her music. Uh, it lights a fire under my butt. I'm yeah. not going to lie. Like she, She's just, she's amazing. And, it's like Heather Little said, Kayla Ray's country than cornbread. Oh, she, she just as country as cornbread. <laughs> yeah. And we love her for it. We absolutely, absolutely love Jeez, Kayla. She's good. Yeah, she's awesome. But, you know, artists like that on every caliber and every genre. Really, I don't, that's one reason I don't paint myself in the corners, you know, because right. you can draw inspiration from everywhere. Yeah, even everywhere. outside of music, Exactly, honestly. exactly. You know, current events or whatever. I mean, yeah. um, where a lot Roger of music Miller used from. to write songs based off of stuff he saw on TV. Yeah. Believe it or not. Yeah. Like some of those wacky King old songs road. that you oh, heard from him. Road, yeah, yeah he, he saw stuff on TV and that's what inspired him to write those kind of songs. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, Roger Miller is one of the best ever. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I always love to hear, you know, from a songwriter perspective, what it's like walking around, you know, and it's going to be hell on a significant other too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> they better just, you know, gear Make up you happy. And... Don't break up. Don't do none of that. Yeah. Because you'll be Taylor Swifted. <laughs> Guilty. I told you, I'm always, Sorry, not sorry. There's another new, new word. I just turned Taylor Swift T-swizzled. into a verb. Yeah, you'll be swifted. Swifted. Be swifted. That's even better. Mm-hmm. Nice. Hashtag swifted. Hashtag swifted. Cool. So, um, what's the what's the evolution process like for you over time? I, I know that with Canvas and Fly Away, those were completely different projects, both in a lot of different ways, but stylistically. For me as a fan, I heard the differences. So is there something different coming in the evolution process with the, with the next record? Yeah, the other one, um, we're going to have to, we're going to try. I don't know what I'm going to write yet because I don't have all the songs panned out quite yet. So we'll see what happens. But I really want this one to be just very, very, very Americana. We're going to do a lot of... Um, Acoustic guitars, a lot of Real rootsy stuff. brush, yeah, brushes and uh, whips and light percussion, and then um, I really want to do some cello stuff. Mm. So we're gonna do some some more string stuff like that. Oh man! Yeah, 
So it's it's stylistically, it's still going to be a little different, but it'll all kind of still be. Cohesive. Do you feel pressure as an artist to always come up with new ideas? No, no, really. I mean, the ideas are going to be my own anyway because it's me that's writing the song. So right. I don't really feel the pressure to, you know. Sometimes I put pressure on myself. That's probably like yeah. the worst, you know. I think I put more pressure on myself than... And what's that conversation like? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, me and the voices in my head, those girls argue. Me and all these personalities <laughs> up here, yeah. we all argue sometimes. And sometimes it's just... And my mom even catch me. She's like, are you talking to yourself? I'm like, no, I'm talking to the biatch on the other side of my brain. That's, you know, second guessing herself about something, you know. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's, it's going to be tough. I mean, you know, as a songwriter, you have to be vulnerable. Yeah. Like, repeatedly, yeah. especially as a performer. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah. you're putting your heart and soul, your creations out there for others' judgment. That's what being a performer is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's why a lot of times it can be easier for a performer never to write a song. Right. You know what I mean? Because right. it's not their heart and soul out on the line. Right. Exactly. But that doesn't work for you because you're the, the songwriter yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 In... That's what I always, we always joke about it. I know, I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times, but like, I, I chose music just as much as music chose me, yeah. you know? And it, it's so true because the lifestyle is completely different. Our, we, you know, that's what I explained to everybody is I'm still getting eight hours of sleep, okay? I'm not sleeping in because I don't get home until 3 a.m. or 4 right. a.m. sometimes from, you know, playing shows. Mm -hmm. And so once, like, I kind of do the math for them a little bit when I can math, um, <laughs> then they understand. But yeah, it's, the music does definitely choose you right back, I think. It's cool. I think so. I definitely agree with that. Yeah. I've heard, and like you said, I have heard that a lot. Like a lot of times, even music, you'll put it down for years and years and years and yeah. it always pulls you back. It's it does. always there on the edge of your mind. Um, unless you replace it with something else that's, you know, bringing out your creative juices. Right, and, and some people do that, you yeah. know. Some people will, and they'll go to, uh, on to something else, right. and maybe come revisit, maybe not. Yeah. You know, and that's cool, too. So is there um, any plans for a family in your future? None yet. Um, I'm finally uh, able to not have any babies, including fur babies in my household. I don't want any more puppies. Nobody tag me in anything with a cute fuzzy baby. Please do not. I know Easter's right around the corner. I know what one of my questions is going to be in the surprise. I might get a now. duck, actually. The little duckies that they have at Tractor Supply, I'm not afraid of it. Wow. Um, or a chicken. We have wow. So you're going to go with fowls. Yeah. <laughs> you can now in Texas have, like, what, up to six chickens in your backyard in a chicken coop? Uh, really? Something like that for eggs, yeah. I got more than that in my freezer. <laughs> <laughs> Me too in the fridge. Fresh the fridge. Eggs. Fresh eggs. You're fit. Oh yeah, that's true. Man, that's not chickens though. Chickens don't lay eggs. Do the well, egg they come do, but the... the eggs we get in the store aren't technically chickens. So. What are they? They're they would have been chickens if they didn't go. Oh to the store. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're I, eggs. I mean, yeah, they're eggs. Whatever. Yeah. Same concept. So we're sitting here with Mandy <laughs> Powell cutting it up, and. Uh, <laughs> This is episode 233, and guys, we're actually going to be right back. We're going to play a game with Mandy, and we'll see how funny we can get her to be. Uh-oh. Hey, this is Cameron Nelson. Thank you for tuning in to the ETX Rock Show. All right, so we are back with Mandy Powell. This is episode 233, and if you guys watch the ETX Rock Show out there, you know that we like to play a game with our guests, and this episode is no different. We're going to play What the Heck with Mandy, and she has no idea what's going on because she did not check out an episode <laughs> Did not check out the episodes. So she has no clue, but this is called What the Heck, and the way this works is I'm going to ask you five questions. If we're having fun, I might do more than that. We'll see. But basically, they're, some of them might be stupid or silly. Some might be gross. Some might be deep. Just never know what I might ask. But what I'm looking for is for you to just turn your filter off. Uh-oh. And just tell me the first thing that pops into your brain. <laughs> this could go awry. <laughs> So you ready for this? I am so ready. All right, so this is What the Heck with Mandy Powell. All right, number one. So this is What the Heck with Mandy Powell. Number one, how annoying do you find uh, baby pictures to be on social media? Uh, it just depends on really if the baby's cute or ugly. So let's say, let's say the baby is like a five between ugly and not ugly. Um, 
Oh, God. Ah, some of my friends are going to get so many unfriends right now. But oh well. It's pretty freaking annoying. Okay. It's pretty annoying. I don't know. I, but I just do the same thing, but I post a lot of pictures of my dog. So. Right. I don't know, maybe my So, uh, I mean, social media is becoming like baby pictures, pictures of food, and pictures of pets. Yeah. And memes, and basically. Memes. Mm-hmm. What is going on, people? I don't know. And political scientists, I didn't realize how many Could you imagine back scientists in the day, like, I'm 41 years old, okay? Now, when I was a kid, we didn't have all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. So, if you had told me back when I was a kid that we would have, like, instant access to anybody on the planet, and including people that were, like, heroes, you know, like... You and I can message Jason Isbell, and maybe he'll see it. Like, yeah. imagine as kids thinking that way. Yeah. Like, I would be blown away. And then if you told me that all we do is put pictures of kids, food, pets, <laughs> and stupid stuff uh-huh. with this amazing technology. Yeah. What the heck? What the heck? All right, number two. You did mention ducks earlier in the show, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up a duck question as well. All right, so Donald Duck. You know Donald Duck, right? Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with his work? Mm-hmm. All right, so have you ever seen him wearing pants? Never. So why does he wrap himself in a towel when he gets out of the shower? I don't know. Maybe he's molting? <laughs> molting. <laughs> but, I mean, let's hope that he's taken a lot of showers. He can't be molting all the time. Yeah. Because then he'd be bald. I don't know. But he's got feathers, so maybe that's like what they consider. That's why he doesn't wear pants, because he has feathers. feathers. So what changes? I don't know. Just like all of a sudden Donald Duck is modest? Yeah. That's just weird. I think Walt Disney was weird. Walt Disney was very weird. Yeah. So uh, along the same tracks, number three, we'll stay with Walt Disney. So Pluto and... Goofy are both dogs. Uh huh. One walks on all fours and doesn't talk. The other one, one walks can on two. One talk. Twos. So I... why do you think? That... What the heck? I don't know. You just no idea. None. None. Uh. I have I have no answers to to these questions that you ask. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't have a a, a a logical response to that either. Yeah. So someday I'm hoping somebody will be able to give me a logical response to that question because it makes no sense. Mm, I don't know. I mean, poor Pluto. I like, know. he's Mickey's dog, and then Mickey's best friend is a dog. Yeah. I don't know. No clue how that works. All right, number four. Um, where do you think squirrels go during hurricanes? <laughs> Higher ground than we do <laughs> in Houston. Uh, that's a great question. Trees? Pipes. No, not pipes. They would drown. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Do you think that maybe they have like a little boat and they all just get in it? That go, would be, maybe that's they go to the ark. That's what it is. That would they be, go to the well, ark. Well, then only two of them could get in. I don't know. Maybe they have hotels. That would be crazy. Like just watching all these squirrels trying to be the two. Yeah. Man, that's that that should be like a Netflix original. Right, Squirrel Olympics. <laughs> Squirrel Olympics. There's the hashtag I there was looking is. for. Squirrel yeah. Olympics. Good stuff. Hashtag Squirrel Olympics. I gotta think of a deep one now. All right, number five. All right, so you can you're a songwriter. Um, You can pick one songwriter, alive or dead, to write your life story in a song. Who is it? Who? Patty Griffin. Wow. Patty Griffin. Why would you choose her? She's just so honest and ethereal, all in one, and. I, I just I, that's probably she's one of my biggest influences musically and yeah. as a songwriter but yeah she she can really just paint a, an image and a picture with words and with music you know I just oh, great answer love her love her alright bonus question just because I think you're single now right yeah alright so this is a good one for a single girl alright so you're dating someone new how long is the appropriate time to wait before you go number two in front of them you got to go, you got to go. I don't, you know, I, that might sound a little crude, but. <laughs> so I, right away? Just, yeah, you just don't like go to like, you know, a Mexican restaurant or something on the first date. Yeah. Or anything that's going to upset your stomach, you know. Yeah. Hold it, I don't know, I'd say maybe what, two weeks. Two weeks? I, wow. That's a, You're what? a fast mover. I don't know. I mean, just, it, it's just, I would think everybody it does it. They have, a, they have a book called Everybody Poops. Really? <laughs> they do. It's a potty training book, I think. <laughs> <laughs> There's our second hashtag. 
Hashtag everybody <laughs> poops. <laughs> That's right. You heard it here first. All right, that was What the Heck with Mandy Powell. Thanks for being a good sport. Uh, and you did win the game. Yes! Good job. Good job. I forgot to tell Taylor yesterday why he won. <laughs> oh, well. What did Taylor say? Uh, I'll tell you after. Okay. Oh, right. Lord, brother. So, what anyway, that was do? What the Heck. We <laughs> always have a lot say? of fun with that game. Um, I think we have like 50 questions. But I'm going to throw something out there. If you're getting tired of the questions I'm asking on What the Heck, give me some more. Just comment down below and we'll use them in a, a future episode if they're good. So, um, just put hashtag What the Heck. And the question after that, and then we'll, we'll ask some of our artists these questions. Um, but you do have your guitar with you, and you're going to play another song. I am. Uh, so tell us about this one. I'm really, really excited for folks to hear this song. So this song is um, a ballad that's on my album. It's called Afflicted. Um, this song came after a really, really painful breakup. And so I was just trying to put my feelings somewhere because I was there was just a lot of emotions running through me. And... Um, I finally got it out into this song, and it was another one of those that it really just came, yeah, you know, pretty quickly. And when I recorded it, and I got one of the finals back, um, the person it was wrote about actually heard it, and both of us just started crying. Wow. <laughs> so it's a very deep song. We actually. Um, we, we were all kind of pretty quiet and shaken up in the studio when I went in and cut it and did the demo on it. And um, Lyndon was like, yeah, that song's got to go on it. So, Good call. Uh, yeah, we, we, we kept it pretty pretty low. You know, it, it's the guitars on it um, are mainly acoustic driven. I wanted to keep it real, right. you know, real soft and... Um, so I'm going to play it for y'all. It's definitely a very intimate song. It's a very even, intimate even song. on the record. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's probably, as far as vulnerability goes, that's probably, that was a very vulnerable moment in my life. Right. So it, it really came across. Awesome. On, on so you guys song. check this out live and unplugged from Mandy Powell. This song's called Afflicted.
Okay, so we are back. Once again, this is episode 233. You guys have just listened to Afflicted. And, um, you know, we haven't given any props to your percussionist today. So Mr. Chad Palmer. I'm going to let you introduce him and, yes. and tell us about him a little bit on, on the air as well. Yes. Why don't you come and sit over here, Chad? Come <laughs> on. Go. Come squeeze in, buddy. I let Chad drive today. So this is Chad. He's the driver slash drummer. Uh-huh. It was awesome. Chad is from Houston. So is, uh, are you part of her band? He is. I am. Yeah, I am. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool too. I mean, it takes a lot of um, it takes a lot of working up, a lot of networking, a lot of um, things to get to a level where you want to be musically, and um, it's kind of crappy to play with people that suck, but who doesn't? <laughs> So. Hey, are you saying I don't suck? <laughs> no, you don't. Was that well, a compliment? Well, awesome. <laughs> oh my God, Chad gave me a compliment. Guys. What's it like working with with such an, an amazing songwriter? It's pretty eye opening. Um, because anything that she would say on a song is something that I would never think about because I'm not a songwriter. I right. tried writing songs. Me and her actually tried to write one on a por- on the porch one day, and it was a it was just a wreck. Like, I came up with the words, and she was laughing throughout the whole thing. She was like, Chad, this makes no sense at all. <laughs> so, yeah, <clears throat> no direction, you know. But I was, like, um, I was trying to put a direction in it, but I, there was lots of different, you know. Right. But, yeah, it go. bombed. And, well, it didn't uh, bomb. It's just not finished. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, it's, it's pretty eye-opening. It's, it's a good experience, and because um, I've played with everybody from way, way low to kind of almost national and – and um, it's it's a lot of work, and um, it's actually an honor to play with somebody like that. Yay. I'm honored to play with you. Yeah, it's awesome. It really is because yeah. um, I learn a lot, a ton. And um, you get so, yeah. to be a part of the grind with me. Yeah, I get to get to be a part of the grind and Dairy Queens and uh-huh. as you were talking about. Don't even say it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're back to the pooping in front of each other thing. <laughs> Everybody poops, y'all. Everybody poops. Hashtag. It's a book. I don't know who the author is. It's so. a book. It's a I book and a hashtag. <laughs> now. But it's now a hashtag. So, Mandy, my last question for you is probably going to be the hardest one for you to answer. Okay. And that is, who is Mandy Powell? Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, well, I am a musician and a songbird and just wanting to inspire others through music and help others cope through life, you know. Life's got its ups and it's got its downs and it's beautiful, you know. We have a very short period. It's it's limited and uh so that's that's who I am and and you know, in a nutshell. Great answer. <laughs> so Mandy, if people are just hearing about you for the first time, where can they follow along with the musical journey? Uh social media web Social media, stuff like that. Mandy with an I, M A N D I, Powell. Uh, and I have a funny story behind that. It used to be Mandy with a Y, but I have a big sister, and her name is Marty with an I. So I changed it when I was little, and it's Oh, you're just trying to be, like, difficult on people. That's uh-huh. what it is. Yep. Wow. It kind of worked out, though, because there was, like, three different Amandas in yeah. grade school, you right. know. So it worked out for the better. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so Mandy Powell Music is the website. You can just type in. You don't have to do the www, because apparently that doesn't work. Um, so Mandy Powell music, it's, uh, Mandy Powell on Facebook, Mandy Pants Powell on, uh, Instagram and, uh, at Mandy Powell Muse on Twitter. Awesome. And if they went to Mandy Powell music.com is all that, all that social media link up on there as well. Yes. Yes. All the links are on Mandy Powell music and then they'll have the links to iTunes and Google okay. Play. And- awesome. Spotify. And if, if people want physical copies of your CDs, what, what would they do? Just contact you? Yeah, just send me an email and let me know the address awesome. and we'll get it shipped right and over. So is there a contact link on the... on the? Yes, management um, at Mandy Powell Music. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And, and venues out there that you would send them to yes, that email as well? same thing, yeah. Awesome. So it's MandyPowellMusic.com. Um, if you don't want to try to figure out all of her different social medias, you can be linked right there on that page. And as I say every episode on the show, you don't know how much it supports an artist just to hit the like or follow button on their social media. Um, a lot of people out there don't think they're really um, helping out as much as they could because maybe they can't afford to purchase the music or... Um, Some people don't know how to do digital or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, all you have to do is hit that like button on Facebook. And honestly, that helps out Mandy a lot. Yeah. Um, Just to know that that following is out there and it helps with venues getting bookings and 
all kinds of other stuff as well. Labels look at that kind of stuff as well. So just hit that like and follow button, whichever platform you like to use the most. If people out there were going to follow you in one place, which one would you send them to? Ooh, if they wanted to get tour dates and announcements like that, um, download the Bands in Town app because I put all of my shows and most of appearances and stuff like that I will put on there. Okay. And if you guys are, are, if you're a Texas music fan and you don't already have the Bands in Town app, then what are you waiting for? Yes, exactly. Get because the Because everybody's on that app. It's and you'll know where everybody's playing every weekend. And what's really cool about that app, too, is you can choose which artists you want to be notified about, and it'll actually email you. Did you yep. know that? Yep. So, like, if I want to know where Cody Jinx is, and all I have to do is click the little check mark next to Cody Jinx, and I'll get emails on every one of his shows. Yep. And so you can do that for any artist that you like or the ones you like the most, and you'll always know where they're playing. It's, yeah. It's a really cool little thing. It's a great app. It's very user-friendly, too. It's yeah. easy to navigate through it. Yeah, very, very true. All right, guys, so you've been tuned into the episode 233 featuring Mandy Powell for the very first time on the show. I want to thank you guys for making the drive up to visit with us Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you for having us No on. problem. A uh, huge, I'm a huge fan of Mandy Powell, and um, I'm a huge fan of the songwriter. And Mandy is one of the best songwriters in Texas, in my humble thank opinion. You. And if you don't believe me, then check out the music. And, and that's the best way you can do it. Just check out the music. It's MandyPowellMusic.com. I'm going to give you all a hint. If you go to YouTube and type in Mandy Powell, both of her records are on there. You can listen to them free. If you like what you're hearing on there, go to the webpage and click on iTunes, Google Play. Purchase the music if you like what you're, what you're hearing. But it's definitely, YouTube is a re really good place to get a good idea what the music's about. And you'll hear everything we were talking about here on the show. Fly Away is on there as well as Canvas. And it's all great stuff. Um, Mandy Powell, Mandy with an I. Don't forget that. And it's P-O-W-E-L-L. -L. You can even um, go in on that. But we'll also have all that stuff <laughs> in the description below um, for you guys to follow along out there. And maybe we'll put a link um, to the actual albums in the, yeah, in the description yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, so you can purchase them right there. Um, if you're tuned into the ETX Rock Show for the first time, first of all, I want to thank everybody out there for supporting the show. Um, you can follow along with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're located at ETX Rocks. If you're watching on YouTube, please smash that subscribe button. That'll help us a lot. And just to let you all know what subscribing to ETX Rocks does, it helps us get higher in the YouTube algorithms. Which means the more subs that we have, the more times we're featured in suggested videos and recommended videos and places like that. What that means is every time we're suggested, somebody like Mandy Powell may get a new fan because of that. So if you're watching the show, subscribe. That, that's the biggest way y'all can help us out, honestly. Um, also hit that like button if you like what we're doing. All of our funding also depends entirely on listeners and viewers like y'all out there. So if you want to donate to the show, you can do that as well at www.paypal.me forward slash ETX Rocks. And guys, that would help us a lot as well. Anything from 50 cents to a million dollars is what we'll take. Um, only in American dollars and dinero. Dinero. I don't know where that's from, but we'll take it. Um, is that Italy? Sure. I don't, think, I don't think it is, but <laughs> I'll Google it after. Um, and we won't take more than a million dollars, so I'll take that's just because we're helping you all out out there. Mm -hmm. And just to let you know what that money goes to, it helps us upgrade our equipment. Um, it also helps us uh, get higher quality on our content as well. And plus, it'll help us get to on-location um, areas to do live interviews with artists. Um, we're hoping someday to do like little interview tours throughout Texas, maybe even beyond, where we go to Fort Worth or Houston and just sit down and do like rapid interviews the yeah. whole weekend. I think that would be fun. That would be super So fun. you can donate there, and we definitely appreciate that. Um, as we always say on this show, we want to thank everybody out there for always supporting live music of all genres and all styles. And don't ever forget, ETX, ETX rocks. That's right. Howdy folks, this is Aaron Watson. This is Bree Bagwell. This is Jake. And this is Walter from Rocky Queen. This is Curtis Grounds, Monty Pittman. This is Doug Supernon. I'm Heather Riddle. And this is Rob Redwan. Ho! Hey folks, I'm WWE Hall of Famer, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Hey guys, I'm Katie Lynn, and make sure to tune in to ETX Rocks with Boston Chris. Hello y'all, this is Ronnie Millsap, and thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rocks Show. Tough guy, ho! Hey guys, we're Black Tie Mojo, and thank you for tuning in to ETX Rocks.